Okay. Right, so we're all here. So I'm going to share my screen. Just letting some other people in. I'm going to share my screen and um, we're going to get started because I appreciate that we are all busy women, all busy mums. And so I really um, am, you know, honoured that you have given up your your lunchtime possibly to come and join me. Hi, Caroline. Hello. Are you all right? Yes, thank you. Good, good, good. Right. So let me share my screen. Uh, let's go from there. move a few things around so you can see it right just let me know just give me a thumbs up or whatever that you can see that that screen brilliant okay so um i'm talking today about the secret to being a busy mum and a strong and healthy woman too and um you know your children are important to you of course they are but so is your health and fitness and the trouble I had several years ago was finding that I, I could look after both equally as well. That was what, you know, that was my struggle. And one would always get dropped. And you can probably guess which one. Yeah, it wasn't my kids. So, it, you know, we, it's always ourselves, isn't it, that ends up getting, that's getting dropped. So this is why this is sort of a topic quite close to my heart, really. And I'm going to talk to you about about this so you're in the right place here today if you are a busy mum with no time to exercise or very little or even with good intentions it doesn't always happen you know that you want to build strength and improve your flexibility and feel good about yourself and you're ready to prioritize your health and fitness i'm going to take you through and hopefully explore with you a little bit about what's stopping you from doing the exercise you want. Talk to you a little bit about how you can be both a busy mum and a strong um, and healthy woman too. Share with you some habits, powerful habits that are going to benefit you and help you. Share what I do, my unique approach and how it works for me and ultimately how you can move more and move better. So this is not all we've gone to many this is not for you if you like making excuses okay if you give up easily <laughs> or you like to remain in your comfort zone okay and i know we don't we what you're here for a reason and the fact you're here and you've given up your time and you're watching this now whether it's live with me now or on replay um means that i'm i'm pretty sure that you're none of those things right my story so um <sighs> I, there was a few years ago where I, I've got three children and um, I struggled to do exercise. Um, I taught Pilates, I've always taught Pilates, but I was doing that for the people in my class. So I'd made that commitment to them. I was committed to my children. I was, you know, helping my husband in his business. And I'd always think, I'd, I'd start the day going, right, I really should do some more exercise today. I really should do something. I'll try and fit, fit it in. I'll try and fit it in. And the time would tick away, tick away, tick away. And by the end of the day, I go, right, get the kids into bed. I'm going to do, do my exercise. And then you'll know this, I'm sure, only too well, the delaying tactics of bedtime start. And so you get the children, they come downstairs, they, you know, they've lost a toy that they weren't interested in for several weeks and we can't find it. But all of a sudden tonight, just when you want to do some exercise or do something for you, it's really vitally important that we find this toy or whatever it is. They need a drink or this has happened or whatever. And you're like, you start thinking, hold on. And the time eats away. And before you know it, it's got later and later. And by the time you actually, everyone's asleep or you know, it's settled, you then just like, oh, I haven't got the time, I haven't got the energy now, I'm too tired now to do anything. And the sofa calls you and you just want to just crash on the sofa because you've just had a day where you've been busy, 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 and you just can't think about doing anything else. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Yeah. So um, that was me. And I'd get to the end of the day and I'd say to my husband, 
Oh, I just haven't had enough time. I haven't had enough time to do what I want to do. And I didn't realise at the time what I was saying, and we'll explore this a bit more in a minute. Um, but that was my pet phrase to the point that he's, you know, he was, oh, you're always saying this. You always say you haven't got enough time. So I'll come back to that point in a minute. This is me. And even though I have got a vast experience personally and professionally in movement, in dancing, in gymnastics, and I still do them now, and I do aerial silks now, and I do ballet, and, and it, movement's always, from when I was very little, always been a big, massive part of my life. When I had children, it just threw me. And I just spent all my time being a mum. I became just a mum. I'd lost sort of who I was. I was a mum to my children. I helped my husband in his business. But who Gila was at that point? <clears throat> don't know. I'd sort of, you know, um, just lost myself a little bit. And even though I had all this experience and I, I taught Pilates and I had been a PE teacher and I'd coached gymnastics and I knew about movement, it still didn't help me in being able to do it for myself. So all that knowledge wasn't enough on its own. This is one of the ladies I'd just like to share with that I've, I've worked with, because I've worked with over hundreds, hundreds of women now, um, because I've gradually, um, through the last three, four, five years of sort of struggles, I found an approach that works for busy women and busy mums. And this is a client, she's a busy mum, she really struggled with her exercise and um she would uh, she'd say to me oh but by the end of the day i've either haven't just i haven't got enough time to do it or if i have got the time i haven't got the motivation to do it and she didn't really want to do do it and this is something she um posted in um my membership a, a few weeks ago and it's just brilliant um and I'll just give you a couple of minutes to read, or I'll, I'll read it to you. Perfect end to a hectic week. Today was my last day of work before holiday, so I purposely ditched my plan A of pre-work Pilates this morning. That's something we've been working on with her as to when she could do her Pilates, how it would work with her routine. And in doing this, I made peace with myself that Pilates wasn't going to happen today because I know myself and I know that come a Friday evening, the only stretching I'll be doing is to help my help the perfectly chilled Sauvignon Blanc back it, its way from the fridge to my glass. But not this Friday. Oh no. This Friday, whilst one child was at swimming and the other was upstairs chatting with a friend, I knew I had the lounge to myself for almost an hour. I glanced at my Pilates corner. This is something else I'll talk to you about as well that she's created. And I think subconsciously expecting to feel guilt for the fact I was about to ignore it. And we get this, this guilt, don't we, that we haven't done it and we should have done it. And sit on the sofa with my wine. And instead, I found myself wanting mm. to do a workout. She wanted to do it. I felt excited about getting my mat out. This hasn't ever happened before. <laughs> She'd never felt that way before. She would have just sat with her glass of wine and whatever, and then felt rubbish afterwards because she you know, would have said to herself, oh, you should have done some exercise, and didn't have time and so on. But she wanted to do it and was excited about doing it. I chose a calming stretch and wind down workout rather than energize or balance as it was exactly what I needed to forget about the mental load of the day. And I still have 20 minutes peace with my vino in hand. Cheers, everyone. And P.S. Yes, Gila, I'm taking my mat on holiday. <laughs> so she was even wanting to, to she'd gone from just really struggling and saying to me, I just don't know when I can fit it in. I just haven't got any time. I get up and I switch the computer on, I get to work and, and I do this, I do this and this. Busy, 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 busy. End of the day, I'm too tired, no energy. And then through working with me, she's got to the point where, actually it's a no-brainer because she just enjoys doing it and she wants to do it and she sees those opportunities to do it so my life changed completely the moment i chose to prioritize my health and fitness 
and if I can do it you can do too you know I'm not a fitness fanatic I don't live to exercise it's not something I do every moment of the day um and even though you might know me or look at me and think well, yeah but you're more flexible than I you can do this and I can't or whatever it it's just I'm a little bit further along the journey I'm still a mum and I'm still trying to juggle life with three kids and a dog and two gerbils and a husband and work and time, you know, and time for me. So let's have a think then, what is getting in your way? Now, because we are busy mums, it's likely, and this is a question I ask when people join my Facebook group, what is the biggest obstacle to stopping you doing your exercise? And nine times out of 10, people put time, time. So what is it you say to yourself about time? And if you want to put anything in the comments here, feel free. Um, my pet phrase, as I've shared with you, was, well, I just don't have enough time. I just haven't got enough time. So have a think, what sort of things do you say to yourself about time? And then the more important question, whilst you're having a think or typing or whatever, is what is that letting you off the hook for? And I remember a business mentor of mine several years ago now asking me this. And I was like, what do you mean? I'm not letting myself off the hook for anything. I'm responsible. I'm doing everything for everyone. I'm doing stuff for the children. I'm taking the dog. Well, I'm doing this and doing this. this. What do you mean? I, just, I haven't got enough time. And they said, no, no, no. But by saying that, you are letting yourself off the hook. You are avoiding responsibility for something. So what was I avoiding <coughs> taking responsibility for? What was I letting myself off the hook for? So you can have a think or put in the comments or jump in if you want to. Caroline, you put, even though I managed to do something today, to do it today, something will interrupt it tomorrow, get in the way. Okay, so it's about being consistent, Caroline. Yeah, um, it's, it's having a consistency, isn't it? And we can sometimes have a really good intention and just say, yeah, okay, and you do it. But then the next day it doesn't happen because life happens and something else jumps in. Is that what you mean? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so I'll tell you what I was letting myself off the hook for or being responsible for. <clears throat> and that was me. I wasn't being responsible for myself and no one else was going to look after me and I was so busy looking after everyone else that I had chosen not to look after myself and not to give myself some time, prioritise my health and fitness. Um, Georgie, you put my sciatica stopped me a lot in the past months and the tiredness that comes with it. Yes, coping with it. It's more about falling in love with movement. Yes, and just getting moving again, isn't it? When when you have a pain, when your back aches or you've got sciatica or anything like that, the, the, mm -hmm. the ache and pain does drain you. It is tired. It can get tired coping with it. Um, and it's just exactly that, falling back in love with the moving, getting moving, enjoying doing it because um, then you want to do it. So the change that I took wasn't just overnight, wasn't just something that happened straight away. It took a while. It took years of me sort of muddling through and trying to find things and trying a bit. And some days it would work and some days it wouldn't. And, and you know, sometimes I'd, I'd start moving. I'd start doing some Pilates at home because I knew what I was doing and I could do some exercises. But it still wasn't enough. I still would find myself talking myself out of it. So, you know, that's why I call it, you know, get out of your own way is we, we are, we're our own worst enemies sometimes. And it's about taking action. So instead of keep getting to the end of the day and saying, oh, I just haven't got enough time. It's looking at that and going, hold on. Okay. So why, why am I, why am I saying that? What's, 
you know, instead of keep saying it, let's take some action, let's take some steps, even just a small step to change that. So that's hopefully what I'm going to help you with today. Yes, yeah, standing desks, yeah, they are good, Georgia. Just, and you're standing at the minute, aren't you? We're going to get up and do something in a minute as well. I'm not just going to sit and talk to you because that's not my, my style. And I fidget a lot as well. Um, so it, it just helps to just, yeah, keep keep moving, keep moving. So um, the three simple steps that I'm sharing with you today come from my approach. This is my approach, my model to um, uh, moving and enjoying moving and not really thinking of it as exercise and something we should do, but as moving and something we want to do. And these are the three steps. So it's about thinking your mindset, about being, thinking about your habits and about moving and how we move and moving better. And for me, the key tool with that is Pilates. And that is one of the most effective ways for busy women to build strength and improve flexibility. And I will elaborate on that in a minute. So when we have all three of those elements, we can start becoming our best selves. We can be happy, confident, calm. We're clear, committed. We're strong and healthy and active. And it all comes together. If one of those things is missing, like I've already alluded to, I knew how to do the moving bit. I knew exactly what to do with my body and how to move it. But because I was thinking and being in a certain way, it was stopping me doing it. OK, and again, we'll elaborate on that in a minute. So obviously, within those three steps are little micro steps, little bits of the process. And this is what so I'm not overwhelming you and it's not I don't want you, you know, that's not my intention. So I'm, we're going to focus on one thing one little action that you can do from each of these steps so we're going to look at our identity being organized and pilates for everyday life so i thought that would be the best three to get you going okay and to get you started so identity who are you have a look at this and see which one or ones you resonate most with and again, you can put in the chat box which ones you um, think you might be. And it might be more than one. It might even be others that I haven't got on there. But from my experience of working with busy mums, busy women, um, these are common ones that often come up. So, Georgia, multitasker. Yep. We're always, oh, I, I was a brilliant multitasker. I was in past tense. Sometimes it still happens, obviously. And there are some things you can quite easily multitask on. You can cook, you know, be uh, cooking and having a chat or whatever with someone at the same time. And that's fine. Um, right. Caroline's got giver. Yes. Perfectionist. Yep. Yeah. Helen, giver. Yes. And I think for busy mums, often the giver is the one that comes up the most because we want to sort everyone else first and so you know like i get to the end of the day and you think oh i could do i could do some exercise now i'd be like well yes but i still got washing to do and i should really do the children's pack lunch boxes and i do and in my head i was definitely i was a bit of a giver a bit of a multitasker a bit of a busy bee as well i think they were my sort of three identities and the, these are identities that in um society in our culture are often held in quite high esteem. So if you're busy, that's sort of like a badge of honour. Yeah, well, I'm busy. It sort of um, feels you like you've got purpose and you, you know, you're doing something. Well, I'm busy. Yeah, oh, that's good. Yeah, busy. And if you're multitasking, again, for women, that's something, yeah, you know, we, we, um, can, we, we can do, you know, we can do several hundred things at once. We might not, the thing is with multitasking is if you're, um, splitting your time and your attention between lots of different things, you're probably more likely to make mistakes. You're not really focusing on each one of those things individually, not giving it your full attention and not getting therefore the best out of that. It's not the most efficient use of our time. I am now as much as I can within my work and, and things I do is I monotask and I just focus on one thing at a time. Do it to the best of my ability. Done. Next thing. And actually, it saves me loads of time than trying to do 101 things because you end up, you ever tried 
um, replying to an email or replying to a text or whatever at the same time as your children are talking to you or something. Because it's all the same part of your brain and you're thinking about words, you end up making a mistake in email or having to reread it. You're not really listening to your child. You're like, sorry, what did you say? Oh, yes, darling. And you haven't really heard what they've said. And then you're trying to do the email. So it, do you see what I mean? You don't always get um, really focused on, on what you're doing. And so, yeah, coming back to the giver then. This is the one I, I think, you know, a, a lot of us as, as um, busy mums feel that, again, we are in a nurturing role. And for a lot of women, we go into, you know, that comes from our ancestors. You know, that's deep in our um, evolution that the woman was more of a, had more of a nurturing role. And it's still like that. And that, that's good. But it doesn't, all of these things can be good, but they don't always help us and benefit us when it comes to doing our exercise. Because exactly what it says here is you'll sort everyone else out first and you'll do everything for everyone else. And that was one of the things I like, well, when I've done everything for everyone else, then I can just sit, I've got a clear mind, I can just sit, I can do some exercise. But you never get to finish everything else. There's never an end point, is there? As soon as you've done the washing, another load appears. As soon as you've done something, you know, with more appears. You never get to the point where you're like, yeah, I've done everything. I can now exercise. Yeah, it, and, and let, unless you're waiting for your children to go off and leave home and go to university or something, you know, and then in that time, you've got older. And as we get older, we just, that's just part of, part of life. We, we get weaker. We tend, we sometimes can get more, um, less mobile if we don't do anything. So I want you to have a think, and if you want to, feel free to close your eyes to begin with, but I want you to just imagine, imagine what your best self would look like. How would that feel? So if, if we had, um, a, a, a camera in your room, in your house. What would we see? What would be going on? How would you be, um, how would the day unfold? And think of this in terms of your, um, your fitness and movement as well. How would you, what would you like it to look like and how would you like to be? And, you know, try and, like I say, imagine that you are an active, healthy, strong mum. You've got plenty of time to exercise. You've got plenty of time to move, be active. You've got plenty of time to be present with your children because you're not trying to do 101 other things at the same time. You enjoy time. Time is your friend. You're not fighting with time anymore. Time's on your side. You're more productive at work. And you, everything sort of, there's a ripple effect of then having these things in place, being, you know, moving, having that time for you. You then feel better. You can then go, yeah, I've done that. I've done something for myself. I've done something. I've looked after myself. Now I'm going to spend some time and focus on, you know, my children. And it takes away the overwhelm. Perhaps being part of your best self would just be feeling a bit calmer. And so life isn't like this. But it's just more like this. Or this. Or up here. <laughs> and so just have a think about that. So this is sort of the first step, and it's a really crucial step I want you to think about, is your identity. And again, a few years ago, someone said to me, Gila, you will always be busy unless you commit to not being busy. So you will always be a busy, frazzled, tired mum who's always just rushing around, got to do this, got to do this, and trying to fix some work. And I'll just answer this email, then I cook dinner, then I do the washing, then I do this, and then I get to the end of the day and I collapse on the sofa and I have no time to exercise. 
if that's what you keep committing to and telling yourself. If you say, right, no, from this point on, Gila, I am not a busy mum. I am a mum who knows, it prioritises, takes responsibility for my health and fitness, and I enjoy moving. And because of that, I, you just feel fabulous in everything. Your self-esteem improves, your confidence improves, your concentration improves, your relationships with your family improve. All of these things I'm not making up. These are things that I have experienced and I've seen the women I've worked with experience as well. So this is your first really crucial step. Okay. Any questions? Everyone okay? Yep. Good, good, good. So... The step number two is this is on our, on my triangle, my triangle of strength model is how to be. And I've called it be organised. And as I said in my story at the beginning, I would start the day going, oh, I should really try and do some exercise. And that's where I went wrong. That was one of the things that went wrong. I said I should. And then with should is attached to guilt if you don't do it. I said try, which meant actually I had real no intention of doing it. Because you either, as Yoda says, you, um, what was it? Um, try, oh no, do or do not, there is no try. You're either going to do it or you're not. So if you've got something in front of you, a, pe a pen or whatever, um, so if you've got a pen or something, try and pick it up. <laughs> so you either picked it up or you didn't. So it's the same with moving. So I said to myself, I'm going to try, I'll try and do some exercise. And again, so I had no real commitment to doing it. So this is where this little step comes in. This is your movement accountability statement. And there's four parts to it. So you can write this down whilst you're doing it, because then you're using the time, we're using it efficiently. You don't have to do it afterwards because you've already done it. So what is it you're going to do? So what, what type of movement? So you could say for arguments say, well, I'm talking about Pilates. We could talk about bite-sized Pilates. This is something I do with my members. We do bite-sized Pilates. And one of the benefits with Pilates, which again, I'll explore a bit more, is you can do it in little chunks and it's just as effective, okay, as doing, you know, hours and hours of it, which is why it's really good for, for us as uh, mums. So write down what you're going to do. It might be you're going to go running or you're going to, go for a walk or swimming or something whatever but write down what it is you're going to do then write down when you're going to do it and I don't mean <laughs> just by the end of the day or when oh, I'll get it done before bed that that's not that's not going to help you I want you to write down specifically so let's say tomorrow I'm going to tomorrow morning for example at half past six in the morning I am going to get up and move. I'm going to do something. I'm going to do my exercise. I'm going to do a session. I'm going to run, whatever. Or at 12 o'clock midday, I'm going to do it. Be really specific as if it's like an appointment in your diary. And if you want to, again, I say this to my clients, it's almost like you've made an appointment with me. So if you were going to do one of, say, my recorded workouts or, or whatever, I will be there waiting for you. And if you make an appointment with someone, you don't let them down. You turn up, don't you? Because that's common courtesy. That's good manners. That's what you do. So don't let yourself down. It's an appointment with yourself. Make that appointment and stick with it. If you don't, it just starts to eat away at your self-integrity. And you start to feel a bit rubbish about yourself. And that's what I used to do. 
So when are you going to do it? Where? You want a little success space, a little space that isn't cluttered with toys and washing. It hasn't got loads of paperwork, hasn't got your email notifications popping up or anything else. Because I have had clients say to me, oh, I'll be in the middle of a workout and then an email's come up and I've just checked it in the middle. <laughs> so your little success space. And again, we had in uh, my membership, we had an interior designer come and talk to us and she gave us loads of tips, things about have a plant there, have um, some nice lighting, have, um, you know, put your things out, your mat or whatever it is in a way that's attractive. Because if it's attractive and it's there and you can see it, you're more likely to want to do it. So that, um, it, that um, Nicola, who I read out her comment at the beginning, she's got a little basket and she's got her mat and everything in it. It's a rainbow coloured basket, which she can, and it's in, in her lounge. So she can get her mat out. It's attractive, you want to do it. If your mat is hidden in the boot of the car or in the loft or whatever, you're going to think, oh, no, it's too much effort to get that. Oh, I won't bother. Because the sofa and the TV might be drawing you in. Yeah, so think about your space. What is in your view? What is visual to you? This is actually a picture of one of my clients. She's arranged this little space. She's, can you see? She's got all her stuff on a little shelf on the side, all her equipment and everything. She has that little space. And it's a space I'd, I'd be happy doing Pilates there. So you have a bit of space, and for Pilates, you don't need lots of space. Okay, she's got a, a bike there, I think, but obviously you don't need that. You, you just need enough space for you and your body. That's it. And then the next bit is who. So the who is, a, there's a couple of bits here. Communicate, who are you going to tell that you're going to be doing your Pilates? So, for example, your children. Right. This is my time, children. Yeah, I'm. Mum's gonna do. I'm doing some exercise. You know, be a role model. Be a, a role model. I'm doing some exercise. I'm doing some fitness. I'm doing some movement. I'm doing whatever. This is my time. Twenty minutes, half an hour, whatever. So just they amuse themselves, or they do whatever they need to do. Tell partners. Tell husbands. Tell whoever else you live with or whatever, so that they know and they respect you. So you're setting a bit of a boundary around your time. You said, look, this is it. Because again, this was a mistake I made, was that I didn't really tell anyone. So I didn't get the support from my husband or my family. I just come down, the children in bed, I come down, I think, right, I'll try and get, I'll try and get some, do something, do some Pilates. Then the children would come down and you know, might be like, no, up to bed. We'd have to do the whole thing all over again. And, but now I say to him, right, you need to stay in bed now because it's bedtime. And it's my time now to do Pilates. So I don't want to be disturbed. And, you know, unless it's an emergency. And we, we, we've we had discussions about what clarifies as an emergency. But we, you know, they know that that's then my time. And my husband knows it's my time and he can support. So if we hear children coming downstairs, he can jump in and go, no, back up. Mummy's doing her, you know, doing her Pilates, leave her alone. You've got that support. And you've also got, they can also act as a bit of an accountability partner. And this is something I help my clients with as well. So it's to say to someone, if you tell someone you're going to do it, they can help hold, hold you accountable. You know, have you done your Pilates? Did you do it at 12 o'clock when you said you were going to? Right. You know, and they can help support you in that. And so a lot of my clients, as soon as they've done their workout, they post, they tell me, and they say, I've done it, brilliant, well done. And I know then, and they know, they know that I know, and that's enough, yeah, that you, you can then keep, um, helps you to keep on track. So I know there's quite a lot in there, but they're all really, they're quite simple, but quite crucial points. So what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, specifically where, where you're going to do it. Find a space that you can just go and indulge yourself in, your little space. And who, who can support you, help hold you accountable? Any questions on that bit? Or make sense? Okay, now, what else is crucial when you're a mum? 
and life is juggling you're juggling things is to have a plan b because you know what life never goes to plan or hardly ever and like you were saying caroline you know you can plan to do it when one day it works and the next day it sort of everything goes to pieces so have a plan b and you might need a plan c and a plan d and a plan e as well but have some plans and again this so use this little sentence to, to help you so if my child is poorly and you know you want to look after them they might need a cuddle they might need you know whatever then i will do my pilates and set a new a new time new day or whatever if i have to work shifts and um i have to do a shift on on a thursday night then i'll do my pilates friday morning whatever it might be so if think of what things come up in your life what ifs are there that might come up you know if your child is off school or um if yeah if they don't you know if they don't want to go to bed or if um if you're not feeling great if if you're feeling unwell then what are you going to do then you might say well i'm not going to do a whole session i'm just going to do some real gentle movement because that will probably help you feel better as well so having a plan b is a crucial backup for um us as mums and as women um because life does like to like to throw things out in our way okay so here's our third step so part of my approach and my success in being able to be a mum and a strong healthy woman too is pilates because pilates is very effective it stood the test of time it's very effective you only need to do a a, a small amount to get the results to get the benefits because it's very uh, mindful movement you're consciously thinking about what you're doing you're it's about doing the right sorts of movement so it's not sitting in the gym for an hour on a bike going absolutely nowhere whilst you catch up with the soaps on the television or whatever they put up, put up on the screens because you're not really concentrating you're not really thinking about the muscles you're using the muscles you're working your mind's not in the right place you're not going to get the benefits not the full benefits and it's taking up a long time so one of the things again that um i realized was and that you don't have to you can if you want but you don't have to do an hour's class the reason a pilates class is an hour and i run pilates classes at, at an hour is because that's how you book the hall <laughs> you have to book it in hour slots and so if you say well i'll book an hour and a half you have to end up paying for two or if you book half an hour it's a long it might be a long journey for people to come just for half an hour so it tends to work if people are having to travel somewhere however with if you are a mum and you're trying to juggle everything it's not just an hour because you've got to travel to the class you've got to find parking you've got to get there you've got to get child care whatever it is you've got to get back again it could take i know when i tried doing um, a, a ballet class um years ago and it would take two and a half hours really out of my evening which is a lot of time when actually i was only doing an hour of, of ballet and I had to get two and a half hours childcare, make sure my husband was around and so on. The other good thing about Pilates is it, you can apply it to every single thing you do. So even if you're sitting here, I can see Georgia moving now. Even as you're sitting here, you can be sitting tall. You can be engaging your core. You can, you know, do a few shoulder rolls. You can, you can just take a moment to stop and breathe. All the principles that we do in a Pilates class or in a Pilates session, apply to everything, everything you do throughout life. Walking, breathing, gardening, shopping, whatever. You can all be always be thinking of your posture and your core and your balance and the flow of your movement. And Pilates, and if I've taught you Pilates, you'll have heard me <laughs> say this, it's about the quality of your movement, not the quantity. 
there's no point doing hundreds and hundreds of sit-ups or press-ups if you're doing it badly because you're just more likely to injure yourself it's about doing it mindfully consciously thinking about what you're doing so it's an approach to fitness that works with your schedule. You don't need lots of expensive equipment. You don't need to go anywhere. You can have a lovely space in your home, which means you can do some whilst the children are in bed or being, you know, amusing themselves or whatever else you can. Um, you don't have travel time. You don't have, you know, it's convenient. It's flexible. You can do it. If you're doing, say, recorded sessions and say that's what um, that's part of what I offer in my membership, you can do it at a time that suits you. Not that suits me or when the hall is free. Um, and you can do little and often. And a lot of my members um, in my membership who did used to do classes with me before becoming a member now say that they don't want to go back to doing classes. They're just going to be a member because actually they do more Pilates in a week than ever did before. Because but you do 20 minutes every day. You know, that's over two and a half hours in, in the week. If, and, and you're not even adding up all the movement you're doing when you're doing other things, when you're driving, when you're, you know, walking and so on. So it's not just, right, I'm in a Pilates class, I'm doing Pilates now, and then the minute you walk out the door, door you forget any of it, any of it, all of it. So it, it transforms. So that's why I, I love Pilates. So let's get going. Let's stand up. <laughs> if you feel like it, you can join me because we've sat for a little while now. And um, we're going to, I know you can't see all of me, hopefully you can see enough of me. It doesn't matter if I can't necessarily see you. But let's just, oh, one minute, that's all we need to do sometimes, is just one minute. Oh, by the way, on my YouTube channel, I have a whole series of one minute Pilates, for when you just haven't got any time. <laughs> so you can have a look at those. Just do a couple of shoulder rolls. And let the shoulders just settle down and away from the ears. Let the arms hang nice and heavy at the side seams of the trousers. Draw the chin into the chest, lengthen up through the back of the neck. Think about bringing your pelvis into a neutral position. So you can just do a few pelvic rocks, tucking under, forwards and back, and find that midway point. Okay, We're aiming for the pelvis to be parallel with the floor. The weight is nice and even through the feet. So we're not shifting our weight to one side more than the other. Just close your eyes. <coughs> and out through your nose or mouth. So just take a deep breath in through your nose. And out through your nose or mouth. Nice deep breaths. Good. Then open your eyes, take the arms, do a sweep forwards, round the back, and then open the chest. And round the back, and open the chest. If you want to, you can bend the knees slightly, and just gradually start to increase that movement. And then take it over to the side, reaching to one side, and then the other. Good. Come into a little twist, so you can let the heel come off the floor. You can twist the ribs, just twisting round. Let the arms just float, twisting round side to side. So we're moving the spine in three different directions. We're rotating, we're flexing and extending, and we're side bending. Okay, come back to standing nice and tall. Let's take a rise onto our toes, see if you can find your balance. Nice and strong. Keep that connection through your core muscles. So imagine a hipster belt and you're just pulling it in a notch tighter than you would do normally. And then lower. So and rise. And lower. This will just help to get those leg muscles waking up, get the circulation going, get the blood pumping back up through the legs. And we're going to take a little bend. A little squat down. Sitting down. Good. Let's alternate it. So we're going to go rise and bend. And rise and bend. One more. Rise and bend. Well done. Come up and balance on one leg. Bring the other leg up in front of you. 
and hold on to something if you need to, keep that core strong, bring your hands into a prayer position and if you can, take a little twist towards your bent leg. Come back to centre, keep growing up tall through the spine, twist away from your leg. Back to centre. Let's do one more, each side, twisting towards the leg. So lengthen through the spine, growing up. Pull up through the supporting leg. Well done, change legs. So core nice and strong, spine long, shoulders down. Exhale as you twist towards the leg. Inhale, centre. Exhale as you twist away. Inhale, centre. Exhale as you twist towards the leg. Inhale, centre. Exhale as you twist away. Inhale, centre. Well done. Give the arms and legs a little bit of a, a shake. Okay, come and sit back down. We've just done one minute. That's it. We've thought about your posture. You've thought about your core. Um, embracing those abdominals, you've thought about your spine, we've just released through the spine because sitting just compresses the spine, gravity just pulls us down during the day, so we've just got the back moving and like I said, through rotation, through side bending and through flexion and extension. We've also just tested our balance, got that connection with our, our mind and we've got the blood flowing, the circulation, and how do you feel? Do you feel better for just having done that? Yeah? And that, that didn't take any time at all. So it's not the, the time. We tell ourselves it's the time, but it's not. It's us thinking. It's our mindset. And like I said at the beginning, having that identity. Actually, yeah, I'm, I'm a mum. Okay, that's fine. That doesn't mean that you can't do any movement or fitness or exercise. You can do both. And Pilates works like that. So, you know, you could do a minute every, have a minute's break every 10 minutes. Um, you know, and by the end of an hour, you've done six minutes, you know, by the end of the day, I'm no good at maths. It adds up and you'll have done something in everything you do. Okay, so just remember that nothing today I've sh shared here is just me making things up, okay? It's exactly what I've done. This is what I do and this is the process I share with hundreds of busy mums so they can enjoy moving and feel fabulous. Um, and it doesn't matter if you haven't done Pilates before or if you've worked out from home or whatever. It's just about taking those small, those small steps. It's also something I'm going to be sharing um, in more detail, I drip feed this sort of process so it's not overwhelming because, you know, we're, we're juggling life. So a little bit by little bit in my membership. And I'm also going to be sharing this approach and everything in my new book that's coming up that uh, I've finished the, the, the draft manuscript of and it's on to the next stage now. So that will be coming out soon. So watch this space. And it is just it's called just that. Enjoy moving and feel fabulous a Pilates lifestyle with Gila Archer and it's it will it goes through what we've talked about today and more and all those other little steps and action things that you can do so keep an eye out for that because that will help you as well so I always thought you know I couldn't be a mum a, a busy mum and and do my fitness as well it was like you sort of just had to accept if you're a mum that's it that's your lot that's what you've got You've got to just deal with it. But that isn't the case. And so if you've taken away one thing from today's workshop, I hope that it's actually is possible to both to be both, to be a strong and healthy woman, to be you, to be your best you and be a mum. It's just about having a different approach, one that works for you. And like I said, those three simple things, it's about how you're thinking, how you are being, your habits and how you move. And you've already done three of those today. You've already taken action and started thinking about those three things. Um, and we've, you know, even fitted in some Pilates along the way as well. So you might be thinking, okay, that's, this is great, Gila, brilliant, but how can I apply? It might be fine for a week, I might do it for a little bit, but sometimes 
you know, life happens and it's sometimes difficult to stay on track, which is where having someone to support you and help you along the way helps. It means so you, you've got sort of two options, really. You can either take, you know, what I've given you today and start putting it into practice and start applying it and spend time sort of trying to find your way yourself, trying to find that road. Or, save reinventing the wheel, follow the road I've created, you know, follow that path and, uh, you know, join, join me and allow me to help you and support you and show you the way because actually ultimately it'd be quicker and easier. And I was a great one for always making my life more complicated than it needed to be. And it doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be complicated. You've just got to just, you know, you haven't got anything to prove to anyone. You just go, actually, you know what? No, I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna to make it your life easy on myself. I'm going to do it. And this is what is that pathway, that journey. So you might be here. You might have got to points where, you know, you're, you're choosing to do exercise but maybe it isn't consistent and it doesn't always happen how you want it to. But we might be feeling very much that, you know, exercise is a chore, got no time and energy, just feel overwhelmed. But by implementing this process, this approach, you don't just have that new identi identity, which is a big thing in itself, you know, you now plenty of time, you are strong, fit, active, mum, you you know, you've got it, you, you've got it nailed. But you'll get those physical changes as well. Because with fitness, with your body, you can't just do it once. You can't just walk into the gym and come out with a six pack. It would be great if that happened, but it doesn't. It takes time. So you have to be consistent with your fitness, with your moving, in order to get the benefits. You'll get those mental changes. And that's another big thing with Pilates. It always clears my mind, always makes me feel better mentally. You know, you start being kind to yourself. Positively talking to yourself, enjoying moving, looking forward to doing it like Nicola did at the, um, I mentioned at the beginning. And the ripple effect long term is huge. It's absolutely huge. So yeah, you might feel great after a workout, and that feeling probably will last all day. But long term, you can remain active, independent as you get older. You've got improved uh, mental health. Um, <clears throat> you're being your best self for you, but and for others as well. You can move easily, prevent aches and pains, so on. Just by keeping moving. And this is the same approach as I've... I've uh, doing uh, doing core as i've already said to you it's the most effective way to for busy women busy mums to build strength improve your flexibility and just feel fabulous in an enjoyable way like i said it hasn't got to be difficult it hasn't got to be hard so in case you're interested it would be a disservice if i didn't tell you a bit like it, how it was in core um because it might be something you're you're thinking about and i'd like to share this with you Rather than leaving you hanging with just a couple of pieces of the jigsaw and leave you to it, I'm here to help if you want me to. So in core, there's a monthly program and a progress tracker, which again helps hold you accountable. You can cross off the sessions and it's all um, based on ability. There are bite-sized Pilates sessions, so no longer than 20 minutes. And like I said, they're all flexible, recorded, so you can just do them in your own time. But I do a live session as well, so you can ask me questions and I can give you feedback about how you're moving. We do a mindset session because, of course, that's one of the, you know, that's one of the points, helping with those habits, um, doing those other little steps. I showed you in the process, think about your identity and your values, what's important to you, because it is a process, it is a journey. Even if we had the time today and I just threw it all at you, you'd just go away overwhelmed not being able to implement or apply you know um half the things you have some little challenges make just keep you motivated some fun uh, challenges to do with um the theme of the month you've obviously got like-minded women in there as well and this is a big benefit to have other women around supporting you sort of cheering you on encouraging you 
knowing that you're, you know, not the only one and we and supporting each other. You get the support and accountability from me and we have one to one calls as well when you first start and every 90 days just to keep you on track and see how you're going to gain. It helps to hold you accountable. This is Amanda, who um, was a founding member of mine, and uh, she says that she was um, she was a real gym bunny uh, before she joined. Um, but now she's got the best six pack she's ever had. Uh, she feels really comfortable in her body. She finds the programs each month motivating. Um, my enthusiasm, obvious love for what, what I do is infectious, which uh, it is. I, I, I love doing the Pilates and keep helping you to um, progress and move, move forwards. This is Rose. She, um, she does lots of active movement during the day. She has done Pilates with me, like she says, once a week for years. But now she's joined core. She does more. She feels stronger. She feels better. Um, she gets more sleep. That's another ripple effect as well. And then here's Amy. Hello, I'm Amy. Bite size Pilates was the perfect way for me to get back into doing Pilates after having my baby. Um, it helped me to reconnect with my core, helped me to regain my strength and flexibility. And um, because the workouts are only 10 minutes long, even with a newborn, I was able to squeeze them in during the day. And it also gave me that bit of me time. Um, I'd recommend it for any new mums and also anyone getting into Pilates for the first time. Um, because it's, it starts off slowly and it builds up over the weeks. Um, and you can get the technique right um, and get into it in the right way. And you will see a difference in your strength and your flexibility and your balance and it will make you feel better all around really. Okay, so that's that's what Amy's take um, is on it all. Now, it's, it's your choice. Um, I only open the doors to my membership to core um, uh, three times a year, uh, currently at the moment, and the doors are closed at the moment. They will be opening in the uh, in next few weeks. Um, and because you've joined me here, whether it's live or on replay, I will send you an email and let you know when the doors are open if you're interested. But there's different ways you can work with me and it really depends on what you're after. So you can join me for one to one sessions and they work best face to face. Um, so if you're local and um, I can do the one to one sessions with you and it's really tailored and specific to what you require. You can go to group community classes you can go to mine or other other people's um, that might be around 36 pounds a month it might be a bit more depending on where you are but again like I said if you are struggling to always get to a class regularly or to do something consistently or you'd like to do more than just once a week then you know that's the class is great but like I say it's once a week and you might have to get childcare, and in holidays you might not be able to get there and so on um, you've got those logistics to, to think about. I have a YouTube channel, which you're welcome to look at, that's free. And um, it's, the only thing with the YouTube channel is it's a bit ad hoc. Bye Georgia, thank you. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Speak soon. Um, your YouTube, the YouTube channel is free, but what, what you find with YouTube is, if you scroll through, you end up wasting so much time trying to find a session that you think is for you. And then you do anything. Oh, I don't know if this is the right one or is this what I need? Am I doing it right? That sort of thing. You don't get the support and the accountability with that. My membership, um, which has everything I've spoken about, is $29.99 a month. You can cancel any time or you can join as an annual a membership, which is better value um, for the year if you want to. And you get um, some bonus uh, restore sessions as well which is for those times when you just don't feel like doing anything they're really lovely gentle chilled sessions so oh I've gone too far just quickly today we've gone through three simple steps that you as a busy mum can do it's about thinking the right way yeah uh, being and moving they're the three parts of that process. And we specifically looked at your identity. You can be a mum and a strong and healthy woman too. You can do both. It is possible. You can be 
organized and use that movement accountability statement. Start doing it tomorrow. Do it, put it in place, try it. And even if you don't get all the elements right straight away or you haven't quite got a space sorted or whatever, you know what to do now and you can put that into place and apply that. And then just get moving. I put one minute Pilates. You just stand up and get moving. Just do something is better than nothing. And after time, you will get sort of almost addicted to it and you'll want to do a bit more and a bit more and a bit more. So hopefully that has helped you with sort of thinking about what's been stopping you from doing the exercise you want to do. You know, thinking about what habits can help you. You've got more of an understanding of my approach and how I work and how you can move more and move better. So I'm just final message for you. Choose to be a strong and active woman who is responsible for her own health and fitness, who enjoys moving and feels fabulous and is an awesome mum because you can be both. It is possible. So I will pause there. Thank you so much for listening to me and um, taking notes and getting up and joining in. I'm going to stop the recording. And then I will stay on if anyone's got any questions. So let me just stop sharing.